Hello, Beamer. Back aboard the uh, International Space Station as the uh, pre-breathe uh, continues in the uh, Quest airlock as Bob Kerbeam uh, on the right, Christopher Fugel saying on the left, and uh, shuttle pilot Bill Ophelein uh, in the center. Pre he prepares the crew lock. Good. Bob Kerbeam uh, in position now for the uh, arrival of the P-5 truss element. Christopher Fugel saying on his way should be uh, in position in the next uh, five minutes or so. Down the length of the uh, truss you can see the station's a robotic arm uh, with the P-5 on the end at the far end. Continuing starboard. This view from uh, Christer Fugelsang's uh, helmet cam as uh, he and uh, Bob Kerbeam are in continuous communication with uh, Joan Higginbotham as uh, they talk through the inches of uh, relocation and positioning of the uh, P-5 truss element. Thank you, Beamer. We copy. Oh, thank you for sending. She's doing good flying. And now all of our tests are passed to all of our SSU. Hallelujah. Thank you. Position for launch lock removals. Um, number of turns that he has uh, loaded into the uh, pistol grip tool uh, is supposed to be 54 turns, 27 turns on the bolt itself. He is, uh, this is Christopher Fugel saying, removing uh, okay, launch, lock in the trash launch lock number two. Okay, Beamer, you can check the two to seven threads visible or the bolt has recess inside the shear cylinder. Bob Kerbeam wearing a suit with red stripes on the pant legs. And uh, Christer just did the soft catcher pin, so he still needs to do uh, launch lock number four. Exactly. Okay. Verifying and we're pretty much right on the timeline. We started 10 minutes early. Copy, right on the timeline. That's, plan. that's good. That's good news. Yep. Christopher Fugel saying in the process of removing the second of two uh, launch locks on his side of the P-5 truss element, that's the last uh, task for him in this uh, procedure in preparation for the final uh, uh, GCA or ground uh, controlled uh, approach, the assistance of the two uh, spacewalking astronauts. Uh, for the final uh, push-in of the P-5 to the install position. 
We have confirmation of uh, proper alignment, so the, the next steps are to push in for the uh, soft dock of the P5 uh, to the P4 truss element. All right, guys, we have snapshotted, and we are going to start pushing in. Roger that. Uh, station port, 20 centimeters, please. Station starboard, 20 centimeters. Oh, yeah. Good thing you repeated that, yep. Starboard. Motion's coming in, we're going to slowly ramp it in, then we're going to do full deflection. It'll still be very slow. Okay, we'll okay. launch in if you have full success on this one. Good motion. That's good motion. I don't see any full success. Did you? None. It just went straight yeah. over. Same here. That's how I like this. Yeah. Uh, you broken, broken the plane on both of them? Okay, both planes are broken. Okay, we're going to keep pushing till you tell us to stop. Yep, continue. Continue. Okay, my pins are raising. I pin on corner two facing. On corner two four is facing. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, it is. All right. Okay, keep coming. Corner one set. On corner one, corner three is in transition. And up on corner two. Really hard to see from here. Oh, it's corner four is. Guys, motion is out. We actually, we were commanding. We're not getting any actual motion, so we're going to okay. go to our world-famous procedure. Oh. And Houston from Alpha, I don't know if you can see Station flight, shuttle flight, uh, Hulu. I hear you have good news. Yeah, good news. Uh, coming out of MMT, uh, no focus inspection is required tomorrow. And at, the, and at this point, uh, TPS is not suspect. Okay, excellent news. Uh, so, Ostline, you guys can keep building your plans the way they were pre-flight work. That's a good good news. Good news. The uh, ISS now 4,000 pounds heavier than it was uh, prior to Discovery's uh, arrival. Connector mate, your go for the power up. Copy, we go for power up. Step six in the IV column, page 7 17. Christopher Fugelsang has completed the uh, mating of a connector uh, for the external wireless instrumentation system, and as we hear, the um, team, the station flight control team, has been given a go to. Uh, flow power to that uh, connector. The space station's uh, robotic arm is uh, now being put into a position, basically a uh, viewing position for um, the translation of the mobile transporter, which currently is at uh, work site 8, way out on the end of the uh, port truss. That uh, mobile transporter on which the uh, robotic arm currently resides will be uh, slowly moved from uh, worksite 8 all the way to the other end of the uh, truss structure. On the big world, the SSRMS is safe, so uh, the SRMS has a go to power down. And Joni and I would like, just like to say thanks to all of the folks in the U.S. and Canada who worked so hard to get this procedure squared away, and particularly um, Yolanda, Jasmine, and Drew. Thanks. Alpha Houston for EDA, that first of many connectors worked. He was, uh, so it was a good power up. Good things to come, thanks. Uh, very nice, too. Bravo C3, counterclockwise P30.5 is what I'm looking for. We agree, Beamer, thanks. Approaching four hours uh, into the spacewalk, three hours, 58 minutes uh, to be exact. Christopher Fugel saying, uh, working with one last uh, bulky bolt uh, in the uh, last task uh, for the relocation of the grapple fixture that was used uh, atop uh, P5 for its uh, transfer to the station arm and then to its final uh, uh, permanent uh, position on the P4 truss. Bob Kerbeam off on a get-ahead task uh, to uh, 
perform all of the utility connections between the P5 and the P4 since he was already in that uh, vicinity he's uh, and the crew was uh, running a, about uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes ahead of schedule uh, he was given a go uh, per uh, pre-flight uh, agreement to uh, go ahead and get the utility connections out of the way This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, Alpha 6, clockwise 2, 30 decimal 5 to close it. Okay, B41, good pins, no thought, good pin radius, and good EMI there. Copy. And that connection. This is a view from his helmet cam, and as you can see, he's. Uh, Unpackaging the uh, new camera that will be replacing the failed one that uh, Robert Kerbeam is uninstalling on the trust segment of the International Space Station. Switching now to a view from the helmet cam of Robert Kerbeam. You can see him holding there the stanchion on which the camera is attached. And just in the upper right portion of your view, uh, you can see uh, Christopher Fulvasang. Uh, working to uh, remove some protective blankets and packaging from the new camera. For uh, step four on the IV column, page 7 33, you can go ahead and perform that. Oh, I mean, look here. We copy the, M the uh, camera is installed for oh. IV column step four. Tell you what, Houston, if you're okay with it, let's send Cynthia train for it. Um, I'd like to send Christopher out there to do those final two launch locks. I'll clean up the work site around the airlock so that once he comes back, hopefully he'll be able to just climb in. Then I'll climb in, and we'll make this 6 plus 30. That's fine with me. Okay, sounds like a good plan to me. Okay. Just let me know if you think of something that makes that uh, team not a smart thing to do. Uh, I guess the only thing to consider is the, uh, you know, the old hatch seals just going in and out of the hatch uh, numerous times. So if I right. just think about ways to minimize that, that's the only consideration I can think. Of. This is a view from the helmet camera of European Space Agency astronaut Christopher Fuglesang, and now uh, in the tail end of his first spacewalk. And just coming into view, Space Shuttle Discovery docked to the International Space Station and the two vehicles just making their way over the Pacific Ocean uh, about to cross over from orbital day to orbital night as we're 5 hours 54 minutes in the phased elapsed time of this spacewalk, the first of three planned for the mission. Just want to say...